let's look at functions. So functions are a reusable type or are Let's look at functions. Uh, functions in JavaScript are a data type, and basically they're just a reusable piece of code. So like a variable, we can put some information into a, into a container and hold on to that information. A function is basically a chunk of code that is put into a variable. So if we want to make a function, we'll create a variable here. Let's call it um, write my name. And the way we do is we put an equals, and then we write the word function like this with open and closed round brackets and then some curly braces. So what we have here is inside of this variable is now a function, and the function is just a reusable piece of code. So whatever I write in here, I can make the computer do it multiple times. So let's just do document.write Thomas. So if I go into my browser and refresh, you can see nothing happens. So what we've done is we've created a function, but we're not actually using it anywhere. And the way we use it is we call its name like this, and we just put round brackets after it. So the round brackets immediately after a variable name mean that that variable has a function inside it and that we want to execute that. So now if I go and refresh, you can see it's put the my name Thomas here. If I did that again, like this, I could execute it again. It puts Thomas again and again. So functions are reusable pieces of code. So the great thing about functions, though, is that this is a really basic one, but we could accept what's called an argument into our function and modify what it does. So let's create another function here. Let's call it write a name. And that's going to be equal function like this, like we did a second ago. The only difference is in between these brackets, we're going to specify a variable that people can fill in when they call our function. So let's just call it name like that. So this is called an argument. And the idea behind an argument is that when the function is used, like up here, someone, whoever is using it, now has to put information into these brackets. And that information will get put into here. So now I could do something like document.write, and then I could just use that variable that I've created. So I'm taking whatever the person passes into here, and I'm using it in my function. So now if I type uh, write a name like this, the function is now expecting some sort of information to be passed in the brackets here. So I could just pass Thomas. Now if I, let's do another, another name here. Jennifer. All right, so we'll do that. If I go and refresh, you can see it's now spitting out Jennifer. But if I call that function again differently, write a name, spit out Stegosaurus. And now you can see it's spitting out Stegosaurus. So our function here is taking this piece of information and then it's using it in its execution. So let's take this a little bit further. Write name uh, many times. So this is going to take someone's name and write it out a whole bunch of times. So we'll do the same thing. We'll capture a name here. But inside of our function this time, let's do a loop. So we'll create our counter, which most often is just called i. So I'm actually going to call it i because that's what you're going to see most often online. So var i equals 0, i is less than 10, i plus plus. All right, and we'll do document.write name. So now let's call this function here, write name many times, t-rex, like that. So we'll go and refresh in our browser, and you can see it's now spit out T-Rex 10 times. I could do that again, write name many times, uh, Apatosaurus. We'll refresh, and now it's writing out Apatosaurus many times. Now, you can see we're just mashing everything together on the same line. If you remember that we're actually spitting out HTML right here, we could wrap these in tags and spit out you know, different tags. So maybe after here, I'll put a plus br like this. So now every time it spits it out, it puts it on a new line, which is a little bit easier to read. Okay, now 
let's say we want to control how many times the name gets spit out. So far we're passing in this one argument name, but if we were to put a comma right here and pass in another argument or create another variable argument, let's call it times, like this, then I could change this to be times right here. And now when I'm calling this function, I get to dictate how many times it gets written out. So T-Rex will be written out five times, and Apatosaurus can be written out 25 times. And I'll refresh, and now you can see it acts differently. So we're now taking two arguments into our function, the name and how many times we want it to be written out, and we're using both of those pieces of information in our function to execute it different ways. So functions really just are a collection of reusable code that can be used multiple times, and they can take in arguments that allow them to act differently based on what those arguments are.